listen, we have to get past denominational affiliations. People will say, well, I was raised Baptist. Somebody called, you know, on the church line to talk to you last night. I was raised Baptist. Well, so was I. Sarah talked to him. She'll give that testimony, I'm sure, this afternoon. So was I. I was raised Baptist. But you know what? I am a Christian. Is there, do we have any Christians in here? Raise your hand if you're a Christian. Okay, now if you're a Christian, you know what you have an obligation to do? Seek the truth of God. If you're a Christian, you are the church of God. You're an individual living stone building up the spiritual house of God. You are the body of Jesus Christ. If you are a Christian, you can't say, well, I'm just going to be a Baptist. I'm just going to be a similar God. I won't be a Seventh-day Adventist. I'm just going to stand over here. The church is a spiritual entity. The church is not a single organization. All organized churches are like ours, like the Adventists, like anybody else, just ministries. That's it. We're not the true church, and neither is anybody else. The true church are those who worship God in truth and seek Him with all their heart. That's who the church is, wherever they are. It's a spiritual entity. You don't get settled in a denomination. You know what a denomination is? It's a dividing factor. And it, people say, well, that divides me from... Well, I'm a first Baptist, so I'm divided from the second Baptist. And I'm divided also from the free will Baptists. And I'm divided from the assembly of God. And I'm divided from the church of God of prophecy. No, what you're really dividing from is Christ. You're letting a little darkness in when you, when you do that. We are not the church. The, the crusade church is not the true church. Crusade church is just a name. That's it. And we have a ministry. This body of believers here and others that join with us other places, we join together to do a ministry. That's what we do. And there, any organized church, they may call themselves a church, they may be incorporated in the name of a church, and I'm not saying that's wrong, it's okay, but all I'm saying is, it's not the church. The church is the people, it's a ministry that the church has. That's what it is. And so as, you know, you can be a Baptist, but listen, whether you're a Baptist or whether you're an Assembly of God or whether you're a Methodist or Presbyterian or, or Lutheran, whatever you are, or whether you're a Seventh-day Adventist or whether you're a member of the Crusade Church of God or whatever you happen to be, first, you are a Christian. First, your obligation is Jesus to Jesus Christ and to God the Father and to seek to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And that's why we always make provisions here for individual convictions that are not, that's not clear sin. Somebody could come in and say, well, I have a conviction that it's okay to live with my boyfriend. Well, I say, that's, you know, that's obvious sin. But there's a lot of room for disagreement. There's a lot of room. But make sure your disagreement is honest disagreement. We can walk together in honest disagreement. No two people agree on everything. Nobody does. We don't have to. You see, we don't have to. But we can't all agree on one thing. We're seeking the truth. We're seeking to be right. We want to be right. And we're open to the truth of God. And we're not trying to seek our own personal interest. And we're willing to listen. Listen to counsel and consider. Do you want people to consider you when you try to present a truth to them or the gospel to them? Well, you have to be that way too. Amen? But first, we're Christians. And as, the, as, a, as a Christian, we are the church. And the church is the pillar and the ground of the truth of the living God. And if, a, if the, Bapt, the Baptists have some truth, but if there's areas where they don't have, if, if, they, if they allow a lie in, if they allow a nativity scene where it's a lie, they need to change. 
And if the church doesn't change it, if the organization ministry doesn't change it, the person needs to change it. The person can't hide under the, umbrella, under the umbrella, well, I'm a Baptist. I'm just standing under this Baptist little banner. No, we all have an obligation to seek the truth. Every single one of us individually, amen. He's looking, he's looking. He didn't say he's looking for a, an organized church that will worship him in spirit and in truth. He said true worshipers. That's individual worshipers. And when we seek to worship God in spirit and truth, we have that in common. And we come together. And we can do a work. And we can try to reach a consensus. Amen. Second John. Second John, notice verse 1. Elder to the chosen lady and her children, whom I love, notice, in truth. These are the last writings of the Bible, and John talks more about truth and love than anything else. And I want to tell you something. Don't ever let anybody tell you, well, you may have truth and you may exalt the truth, but I have love. Well, we'll get to the love chapter. We'll get to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and we'll read what it says. You know, you, you're going to find that you can't have love without truth. That's what it says right there, I think in verse 6. But we'll see. Maybe verse 4. The elder of the chosen lady and her children, to the chosen lady and her children, whom I love in truth. And not only I, but also all who know the truth. You know how you'll know the truth? You'll seek it. And to know the truth is to know Jesus. To more of the truth, to know deeper truth, is to know Jesus more intimately and deeper. That's true. For the sake of the truth. Notice, listen what John is saying. To the elder, the elder, to the chosen lady and her children. That's the church and her children. Whom I love in truth. And not only I, but also all who know the truth. For the sake of the truth which abides in us and will be with us forever. In other words, I'm not letting go. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I was very glad to find some of your children walking in truth, just as we have received commandment to do so from the Father. So the truth is something that we hold on to, that is in us, and we walk in. Notice over in 3 John, verse 3. For I was very glad when brethren came and testified of your truth, Gaius, that that is how you are walking in truth. I have no greater joy, no greater joy than this, to hear of my children Walking in the truth. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that love, now this is the love of God. The same love that doesn't seek its own. The same love that allowed, that, that gave Jesus the power to lay down his life. That love rejoices in the truth. If someone does not rejoice in the truth, guess what's missing? The love of God. The love of God rejoices, rejoices, is excited, loves the truth. There's lots of joy when you find that treasure. You search for it. You rejoice. You find truth and you rejoice in it. Amen. Amen. 